is Michael Morris. I'm the superintendent of schools for the Amherst Public Schools. And welcome to the next episode in, of Window into ARPS. Today, I am thrilled to be welcoming the administrative team from Wildwood, Principal Nick Yaffe and Assistant Principal Alan, Allison Estes. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's great, great to, to be here. Thank you. And I know one of the things that uh, our viewers always like to hear about is how are things <laughs> happening at the school level? And what, is, what does that look like for students? What does that look like for staff? And what are some exciting new things that people may not be aware of? Um, and you know, many times our viewers are both families and students sometimes in the community, but often families who have had children in the schools many years ago, and it's really helpful for them to be able to reconnect with the school their children went to and they might have been a part of. So really appreciate you both coming. And before we talk about Wildwood today, I'd love to hear a little bit more about yourselves. I know, I know you both pretty well, but especially for the viewers. Um, I'd love for you to tell the viewers a bit about yourself and what motivated you to become an educator. Both of you are incredibly talented, intelligent individuals. There are many careers you could have taken, and I'm interested how you got to be uh, working with young people and bettering their future. So, Nick, would you mind if I start with you? Okay, yeah. so a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> uh, back when I was a youth in the uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts area, Massachusetts area I, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with my life, like many people at the time. And um, someone asked me it, uh, to actually do a shift in what was a parent co-op, a daycare. And I was 20, and I, I said, sure, that sounds good. I'll try it. I'll do that for you. And I just remember this feeling of like um, joy that I got from that experience of just being around children. Just uh, I felt like I could express so many different parts of myself. Um, and also make a difference. And, and from there, it just gradually led to wanting to learn more about it. I figured, okay, I'm volunteering, then I started to substitute. And I, I thought, this is really fascinating, Chil the world of children. And so I've been doing that ever since. That's great. And what brought you, before we go to Allison, what brought you to, to Amherst and your current position you know, of being a principal as opposed to working uh, more directly uh, in classrooms? Yeah, so sometimes in life things just kind of happen uh, without a real plan to it. So I came to Amherst um, from the daycare I went to becoming a teacher and becoming certified to be a kindergarten teacher. And so I did that at a school connected with Tufts University. And it was a lab school and, and so there was a connection between research and colleges. And at that time, Amherst had a lab school as well connected to UMass called Mark's Meadow. And so we moved out here specifically so I could work there. And also, uh, my wife and I really were looking for a, a place to raise our family that had diversity in it. And uh, Amherst had that. We wanted our kids to grow up uh, where they could start to understand differences by going to school with kids that were different than them. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Allison? Um, well, there are so many different <laughs> moments of when you want to come into education. Uh, I had a desire to be a teacher for a very long time, but my mother was a businesswoman, and she <laughs> made it very clear that that's what you should be first. So I was actually a programmer for a while. and um, But then I was feeling like it was a very hollow space for me, and then I was placed on a project in the Atlanta City Public Schools, helping them get uh, systems installed. And I just loved walking into every single school. I loved the smell. I think it was uh, peanut butter and paste or something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just thought it was a great environment to be around people who cared about the future so deeply. And, um, and so I was sitting there watching 60 Minutes one day and Marva Collins, who's an educator, in mm. Chicago was being interviewed and she was so dynamic and yeah. so inspirational and I said you know I can't spend 20 years doing something that I just don't believe in I have to go into education now so that's how I started into that space and um, you know I went to school at night and got my degree so that was a, s a second career in matter speaking yeah. but I didn't spend very long as a consultant <laughs> 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 it was only a year or two but um, it's been a good space to be in just because you are helping communities in a space from being proactive. And that's what I really believe in. Um, with so many other professions, people are in a state of desperation when they need to find a lawyer or a doctor. But 
in schools, they're really operating from a space of hope and belief in mm. the future. And I really want to be a part of that and to hopefully be a part of the solution. That's Thank beautiful. You. Thank you both. And so now you're both in educational leadership roles. I know you both had long teaching careers before you entered mm -hmm. uh, being a leader. And um, so I'd love to hear a little more about what motivated you or interested you. Nick, you started touching on it a bit earlier, talking about Mark's Meadow. What motivated you to um, change roles, staying within education and all the things that, mm. the re for all the reasons that you both indicated, uh, but the role of a leader is both exciting and challenging and probably has um, moments um, that are very different <laughs> than that that you have as a teacher. I mean, I can think of my teaching days and remember quite differently. The, day, the flow of the day uh, was quite different, even if the goal of the day was the same. So mm. I'd love to hear a little bit, and maybe we can stay with Allison on this one. Mm. What motivated you to enter into a leadership capacity? Um, uh, well, I had initially started out with uh, doing a lot of computer and data stuff for teachers because that's something that I can do. And so helping people interpret uh, statistics and, and then also how do you just get your computer working in the morning. <laughs> so um, I started uh, volunteering and then becoming the teacher leader of assessment for the school system I was in. And, and I really enjoy seeing the systems that are connecting different grade levels. I find that really fascinating, how to create a system that works well. And um, so I decided to get my administrator's license in New Hampshire and, and look for opportunities that will allow me to be able to operate from more of a systems capacity, not just in the classroom setting. So this is the first opportunity I've had to officially do that, <laughs> even though I've had different opportunities as teacher leader positions in the past. So it's exciting to be on that side of things. Good, thank you. And, and one of the things that you did, Allison, that really struck a chord with me, um, when she knew that there was this opening for leadership at Wildwood, Allison, one of the first things you said was, how can I serve the community? You know, she, and that, I, I think, is to me really struck a chord as one of the essence, uh, the essential points of leadership is that if you're coming from a place where you're going to serve this community, this incredible, uh, beautiful community like Wildwood or like any of our schools, then, then the leadership that will happen in a, in, a, in a wonderful way. People will see that you're there to serve, whether it's the parents or the teachers or the kids. Uh, that's why you're doing it. Um, and so as soon as you said that, I said, oh, this is the right, <laughs> I thought to myself, this, this is the right person uh, for this type of work. Because, um, you know, leadership, I, I do feel like we have this, it's almost like a sacred responsibility to our communities to, as you said, it's like hope. And there's something special that I find about the elementary schools that I think you're touching on in that for all of us, it's this confluence of like hope uh, for, you know, every parent. Uh, who's sending off their kindergarten up to sixth grade, they hope for the best, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers, if we can, uh, one of the things that, that I found in terms of shifting to leadership, like you were talking about, is like to keep people inspired. Like every, we all know, because we went into teaching, you went into teaching, you're coming from this place of wanting to, to make the world a better place, mm. you know. And and so if you touch on that inspiration with our staff, then things really start to take off. Yeah. I had this interesting experience over the last few weeks that what you're both of you are mentioning yeah. resonated as I've had the opportunity to be in a number of different preschools and mm. um, daycare settings and meet families as they're entering the district mm. in the next one to two years. And then come yes. back to the middle school where we had a number of seventh graders right. <laughs> recently show right. up. And, and to think about the difference and the juxtaposition yeah. of where students are at age four and five when they're entering our schools to when they leave elementary level, usually at age mm -hmm. 12 or 13, mm. it's so foundational. Um, right. and, and it is inspirational because what mm -hmm. families are wanting, to, wanting their students to experience over those seven years, it evolves over time. Mm -hmm. um, but just that, that hope and that, that uh, the, the language that you're both using, I definitely continue to hear as I talk to more preschool mm -hmm. families and what they're looking for in an elementary school experience. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so now getting more specific on Wildwood, uh, what are some neat, exciting things happening? There's always neat, exciting things happening <laughs> at Wildwood, but uh, for many of our viewing audience, they may not either have children or be connected to the school. So I'd love it if you could share you know, some things happening at Wildwood that you'd want the larger community to know about. 
and either of you could start. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I know I'm really excited about our open house coming up. Uh, it's going to be a student-led open house mm -hmm. experience, which is the first time we've done that. And um, I think that the opportunity to let children say, w these are the areas of my school that I'm proud of, and these are the things that I want to share with you, um, I think that's a really exciting opportunity. I, mean, I personally, as, as a parent, have never been in a student-led open mm -hmm. house experience. And um, I think that opportunity to see my child with my me in that space with their teacher, mm. all in that space so quickly in the beginning of the school year, I, I think it's going to be a powerful moment and, um, and one of pride because yeah. there's so much to be proud of in what you see happening in the school every day. And you see the children happy to be there. And, um, and that's the part that sometimes doesn't get carried through in translation when kids come home. You don't always get the same things happening. So I think cr creating that integrated moment is really important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, and, and I th uh, me too. Me too. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement in the building on that night. And uh, <laughs> it ties into what all the IMRS elementary schools have been looking at, I would say, over the last six, seven years is really this idea that, so how do we engage students? How do they participate fully in their learning? And we've come across this philosophy of where they're taking ownership for their own learning. So this is a natural extension of that. You know, so where our students, I think if you walk into Wildwood, you get the sense that their voices are, are there. You know, they're heard, they're comfortable speaking to people. And so if you go up and you say, well, what are you learning? They can explain that to you and explain their thinking around that. So in this case, they're going to be doing it with their parents. And um, so we're very excited to have them have that opportunity. And so, you know, piggybacking off that, you know, what are some of the major goals that, that you both have for the school this year? What are things that you're, other than the open house, that you're actively sure. working on and perhaps spending you know, faculty meeting time or, yeah. you know, when you connect with the parent guardian organization. What are the types of things that, that are the, big, the work of the year in addition to the kind of primary work of educating students on uh, a day-to-day -day of the year? Yeah, well, as, as you've <laughs> talked about the st school <laughs> committee and we've talked about is that it feels like Wildwood and all the elementary schools are poised to embark on this process of, of what's our vision for our school and embrace that. So that's really going to be a year-long uh, discussion, uh, activity with our staff, with our families, and with our children. So what is the Wildwood identity? What, what, are, what, is, what are our values? How do we express that? What are the things that all of us agree as teachers, as faculty, uh, to commit to? So we have areas that we've been exploring, like student ownership. So some of the exciting aspects of that have been uh, going into pro what we call project-based learning. And so at every grade level, they have developed a, a project that allows children to, to look at st something in, in depth. So the idea that they go deeper into their own thinking, and then they express that to uh, on, an audience, an authentic audience. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to doing more of that work. Yeah, the student-led inquiry yes, aspects are yeah. deepening the project-based um, curriculum yeah. into really helping a student in investigate their point of entry into the curriculum. Um, I, I think student-led inquiry is a really exciting space. Um, as a teacher, you don't know where it will lead, so it's a little funny feeling when you create a lesson or an experience in which you're not sure where a student is going to go with it because there's about 20 little minds in there and they're <laughs> going to go into these little fissures and ideas that will really take you into another space because you hadn't thought about it. And so much of lesson planning is trying to predict the outcome. Like this is how it's going, this is your finished product, this is what's going to look like. And I think student-led inquiry is really trying to burst that open a bit so that it's, it's still high quality, it's still an expression of expertise, of proficiency, but it's not as predictable what that outcome will look like. So mm -hmm. I, I find student-led inquiry really inspiring, and that's something that I know we're in like the second or third year. So I know last year we worked on it, and mm -hmm. we're doing it more mm -hmm. this year, and this is my second year with the school. <laughs> but um, I, I'm sure that they started a little bit before then too, but it just seems to be an opportunity to g even go deeper and richer. Yeah, and I, I think the other part that you're touching on is that it, it, I see it also as a thread 
that connects all the subjects. So if kids learn to ask good questions and then mm -hmm. to investigate, that can happen in math. So in math, we want our children to ask good questions. And then in, in, uh, when you walk into a class where they're discussing a, a book that they're reading, you want them to ask questions about the author's intent. And similarly, in social studies or so with around social justice issues or science, so inquiry is a part of everything that we're mm -hmm. doing. And so if you're teaching them how to ask good questions, how to then weigh the evidence that they see and pull from that and then to express themselves, it's going to connect the whole curriculum. Seems like that might be good advice for, for not just children, but many of us in the yes. country <laughs> at the moment. Yes. So um, <laughs> I, I appreciate that focus. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that parent guardians are a huge part of uh -huh. what make Wildwood Wildwood. And um, I wondered if you could share a little bit about, you know, how families do connect with the school regularly and also some of the work of the um, PGO and how that contributes to uh, what Wildwood offers its students. Yeah. You want me to go on this one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you want to go? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. whichever. Well, similarly, we want, we want parents to be our active participants. We see partnerships um, as so important, just like the foundation of our school. I guess one of the things that I would say is that just building that trust, mm. you know, whether it's with families, um, and that they can speak up and they can advocate on behalf of their children. And what I see us doing is then we come together and then we try to solve the problem, uh, wh whatever is going on, whatever the concern is. So that's the number one thing I would start with is with trust. Mm. I, I really admired how the PGO, um, I, I remember I was at Parent Pickup or one of the events that we were mm -hmm. hosting and, um, and a parent came to me and said how important it was to try to create the most diverse uh, PGO possible and yes. how, to, how can we reach greater area, um, members of our community mm. and I know that that's a goal in so many uh, parent guardian organizations but um, I've in my experience it's usually the, the teachers who are trying to put that forward but this person was saying this mm -hmm. is something we're really working on so yet again I'm just amazed at what a wonderful community Hammers is and I'm so happy to serve it but the so that effort, and then the Student Government Council, the SGC, mm -hmm. wanting to figure out, well, how can we use this student-led um, open house to understand who's coming and is this mm -hmm. effort is creating uh, more access for different communities to the school, and how are they responding to that experience, and how can we measure that and see how that information can feed back to the PGO. So that whole process of trying to use these entry points of bringing families together and making sure that they're represented in the different uh, organizations in the school, it's just vital to uh, us being a thriving and, and growing space. So I was really excited to see mm -hmm. all of those connections developing in just the first month, yeah. you know? So I'm yeah. excited about that too. Yeah, the one thing I wanna throw out there for you both um, is that I found like one of the strengths of Wildwood, and there are many, is how much students and families are honored and celebrated around the school. So mm -hmm. I think of the first day of school where the UMass band is there and families are there <laughs> and kids, you know, and kids are being welcomed. I think of the map that you have at the front of the school mm -hmm. where students are able to um, put their, how their, their identity up. And, um, and I, I didn't know, uh, I guess the question is, you know, is that intentional or is that sort of how things have developed, but it is notable, you know, and mm -hmm. as someone who, not just in Amherst, but, you know, in the last couple of months I've visited schools in a, in a number of other districts, and I've often shared some of the examples I've seen at Wild with other schools mm -hmm. because I, I find it so powerful and, and poignant, um, the, the kind of celebratory routines and rituals uh, that are surround Wildwood and, and start of the year, the end of the year, and I don't know if either of you could talk a bit about how you experience that or, or you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe sure, I'll start, and then, and then Alice can also talk a little bit of how she experienced it as a parent and then as, oh, a, yeah. as a new teacher coming in. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think, you know, you, you've hit on something, so I know we're going to go through this whole envisioning process. But when we started talking about it as a staff, I, someone just started to speak up about welcoming. And so to me, welcoming is really the, the foundation of Wildwood. Also, the two Ws go together, you know, wild. <laughs> Wildwood welcomes and that so that as soon as you come in that you are welcomed 
uh, whether you're a parent, child, or a staff member, and that people see you and welcome you and that you see yourself. And so that you're walking around Wildwood and, and you see something about that you can connect to as a family or a child. And so the map does that. The photos right by the front door that says love makes a family that we take. And, and so um, you can see families, whether you see your own family or families like you, um, and that you're greeted and that you have full value. Um, so that it is intentional, I, I would say. When we first started to do some of this work nine years ago at Wildwood, we, we read an article that we still come back to. It's called Good Seeds Grow in Strong Cultures. Mm. And so this idea of like how you build up the culture of the school is something that we think about all the time. Yeah. So, and Allison. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had decided to move to this area before I found a job. <laughs> so <laughs> that was uh, an adventure in and of itself. <laughs> But um, I really wanted to find an area that was more diverse for my child to grow up in. And, and we'd been living in New Hampshire, and I wanted to be in a space that um, represented that experience for him. And also myself, I was ready for that as well. And um, so I'm looking, and then I saw Wildwood, and I thought, well, let me go visit. You know, and I brought him down on his February vacation, and school was in session here because New Hampshire has a staggered one. And we walk through the front doors, and immediately you see that map. And we both were like, oh, that's so cool. That's so nice that they did that. And so that's just such a nice thing to feel welcomed in that space because that is not something that's typical. And then uh, you walk through the front door, and uh, the secretary, Joyce Gooden, is welcoming you with this, like, she doesn't <laughs> even know me, and, but she <laughs> makes me feel like I'm family immediately and says, oh, let me show you the school. And, and I'm sitting there walking through with her, and she's bragging about the spaces. And I'm noticing the posters, the, the purposeful effort to make sure that different p groups are represented in all these different spaces. And that's not something that you see everywhere. And every sp smiling people, which is I actually <laughs> think that's really important in yeah. school environments when people are smiling. Um, but it's, it was clear to me that the effort to make sure that the culture and the families are represented in some way, either through uh, the literature that was being displayed, the efforts on the bulletin boards to make sure that they had a diverse um, representation for, um, for the read aloud moments that they bring in read, um, readers from the community. I mean, these are all moments where you have an opportunity to increase diversity, incre increase representation, or you can ignore it. And it was clear to me just in that one, one hour tour that this was a school that really was working hard to represent its community. And, um, and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, at that time, no one knew I was a teacher. <laughs> 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 so um, when I saw that there was an opening, that's when I took the opportunity. Because you know, I learned a long time ago that when you are dedicated and you work hard, that there's any number of school systems that will take advantage of that, but you need to be a part of a system that will feed you as well, because it's such a difficult profession. Um, and so I wanted to be a part of a space that I knew would, I could serve, but also I could grow. And that's what I needed to be the next part of me, you know, <laughs> the next on my journey, right? So I was very thankful for that opportunity. Yeah, as are we that you chose us. Yeah. So, um. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other part of that that you saw was that the staff are embracing this vision of welcoming. Mm. And so you just feel like you have this whole army of people out there who are bringing in new people and helping them get settled. And the children, too. Whether you know, So every year we, we welcome between 40 and 60 new students in grades 1 through 6. And so the kids themselves, oh, do I have any new, new kids in my class? And they'll give them tours. And the other part that uh, I was even more excited about is they're, they're actually starting to embrace this idea that at Wildwood you can be who you are. And they, they coined that phrase. Mm. The, f the current sixth graders, when they were in third or fourth grade, they came up to me and said, we're gonna, they had these posters. Oh and they were, be who you are. And they started putting them all over around Wildwood, mm -hmm. and they did these skits at the assembly, and that was just like, whoa, okay, this is when it can really happen. Yeah. Um, if, if, it's, if the vision is embraced by everybody. Yeah. 
seems like they created a social norms campaign at their <laughs> yes, elementary they, they, school. They did. So yeah. they did. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't say they sort of. They yes. did. Yes, they did. And and it's there's always work to be done. So right. you know, we all make mistakes and learn from them. So right, absolutely. If viewers are interested in getting in touch with you, what's the best way? Uh, they have an idea. They you know want to follow up with you. What's the best way for them to be in touch with with you? Email, phone. What would be the well, email and phone, uh, phone numbers are always accessible yeah. that way. Um, I, I mean, in terms of frequency, I check my email every day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. This isn't a quiz. Um, no, I mean, so would you mind sharing your email address and the good folks at Amherst Media will oh. put it on the bottom so they Whoa. can. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, to reach the educators at Wildwood, yeah. you have SDs A. That's my E S T E S A at A R P S dot O R G. Yeah. So, yeah. and I will check that every day. I was emailing parents last night. And <laughs> I felt good about that, and they said thank you for the prompt response. I said thank you. <laughs> you know, but it's yes, a goal. It, yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a goal to get there every yeah. day. Yeah. Yes, you can also set up time to talk too. So, yeah. so my email is yaffe n y a f f, like in Frank E n <laughs> at arps dot org. Um, but people can also just call our main uh, number, 362-1400, and set up a time to talk also. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share about Wildwood and this year, 2018? You've shared an awful lot, so there's yes, no pressure yeah. on that question. I don't know, Allison. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I know that I'm excited about all the different opportunities. We haven't even started to do the big push for professional development among the staff. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. exciting. That's yeah. all coming up. Right. I mean, that's all exciting stuff. You know, math centers and. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, there's, there's a lot of things coming yeah. that um, it's only October first. Yes. So <laughs> that's it's, true. There's it's just true. a lot to look forward to. Yeah. No, I can't. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, and I think schools are. Uh, in the always in the process of becoming so I think that that's I think I feel very very lucky uh, to be in my position our position mm. to serve such a community where you have educators that who really care you know and, and really care about us being the best that we can be so they're constantly coming up with new ideas or ways that we can get better families who care and, and kids yeah well thank you you both create that environment where, where all the stakeholder groups feel comfortable coming in to share things that we can do um, to best serve our community. So uh, that doesn't happen naturally or automatically. That comes from a culture that gets built from the leadership. So I thank you both for being here today and thanks for sharing a bit about Wildwood with the larger community. And I think thank you to you, our viewers, for watching uh, the latest episode of When Do Into ARPS. We'll be back next month with an additional episode. Thank you.